Today we're going to make a chocolate cutout sugar cookie. This is an easy chocolate sugar cookie dough that comes together in one bowl and it can be made completely by hand. It's easy to roll out between parchment paper and then you can cut it out with any cookie cutter that you want. Um, it holds its lines and keeps clean, crisp edges when baked, but it is soft and chewy and absolutely super rich and chocolatey. It's an easy chocolate sugar cookie recipe that you can either leave unadorned and undecorated or you can decorate with your favorite royal icing or an easy sugar cookie icing as well. If you're enjoying this video, be sure to hit the subscribe button below. Be sure to hit the bell icon to be notified every time I post a new and delicious recipe. Let's get into it. So these cookies are super easy. They're also delicious. They don't spread. They're super chocolatey. <sighs> Guys, <laughs> but they're all made in one bowl plus all the ingredient bowls, but one bowl. So you can technically make these in a stand mixer as well, or with a hand mixer, no big deal. Totally cool, probably even easier, but like, I mean. All right, we're gonna combine everything. So we've got our dry ingredients. We've got, in this bowl I have AP flour. This is cocoa powder, it is Dutch processed, which means it's processed with an alkaline. You can use any cocoa powder in this recipe, okay? any cocoa powder. Um, it will alter the flavor. Dutch process is a little richer, a little deeper, but honestly, any cocoa powder that you have on hand is gonna be great. Kosher salt. There's a little bit more in this recipe than there is in my rolled sugar cookie recipe. That is because of the cocoa powder. Um, and it just enhances the chocolate flavor. It's really, don't skip it. It's just so wonderful, okay? Baking powder. Okay, whisk it together. You don't need to sift it. You don't need to do anything fancy here. Um, I think a larger bowl would have been a, a better choice for this endeavor, uh, just because you could whisk a little faster without getting cocoa powder everywhere. What's that? Oh, that's a professional trick. You do this while you whisk and it moves faster, okay? That's your tip for today. Get yourself a bigger bowl. Mm -hmm. And in said bigger bowl, put your melted butter. Now this is melted but not hot. It's probably a little on the cooler side. I think my room is actually colder than I think it is, but that's fine. Um, just get it in your bowl. And then my sugar. This is just granulated sugar. It looks a little clumpy, and that's because it spent a little time in storage. And I guess it was moist in there. So, you know, I'm not stressed about it. You shouldn't be stressed about it. Just whisk it in sugar. Try to get it clumped out at this stage, right? Like, you know, like you want to be rolling into the rolling stage with clumps of sugar. So go ahead and get this clumped out at this point here. Oh, amazing. Gorgeous. Add your egg. This is pre-whisked. It doesn't have to be pre-whisked. It does make the combination easier. Truth be told, it's only pre-whisked because I had extra large eggs. So I needed to measure them. Okay. Whisk all of that together. Add your vanilla. Cocoa powder. At least I didn't wear a white shirt. Often I feel like I wear a white shirt with cocoa powder. It's like, oh why? Okay, so just stir this in. It would definitely happen faster in a stand mixer. But we will need one. So we're just gonna as soon as I see almost no clumps of flour or anything, I'm gonna add a little bit more. We do it, I like to do it about three additions. It is science, but it's not rocket science. And it doesn't have to be that accurate. So you can just, just eyeball it. What you're trying to avoid is adding so much flour that you overwhelm the dough. And then it makes it harder to incorporate the ingredients. Kind of like I've done just now. So you can see that it's a little bit harder to to work this in because there's so much more flour, but it's not egregious, it's not, it's okay. We're all okay. So just keep keep working it. I am, I am like spreading it a little bit. Do you see what I'm doing? Where I'm like kind of mashing it and spreading it against the side. Okay, we're gonna add the rest of our flour here. Now, we are going to finish this by hand. And you're like, what? It's not a, it's not a pie dough. What's, what, no. The only reason is because there is so much dry ingredient. There's so many dry ingredients. So it is a drier dough in a way. And you know, it just makes it easier to combine. So I'm in a, I've got flappy sleeves as one would, and I'm just gonna get in there. 
okay? This is the fun part about pastry. This is the part no one talks about. Just getting in there with your hands and just feeling the dough and the ingredients. Just, this is amazing. You could totally do this without your hands, um, but it makes it faster. Um, and we don't have all day. We, we want cookies. So I'm just kind of squeezing it together, right? Like I'm just kind of rubbing it between my hands in a way and squeezing it. And at this point, because your hand is already dirty and in there, like if you want to take a little snack and like try it, try the dough. Like I'm not saying you should, but like my like my rolled sugar cookies, um, these chocolate rolled sugar cookies, we want to roll the dough when it's fresh. It makes it easier. Um, it's not going to develop an excessive amount of gluten by doing it that way, um, but it does roll better when it is room temperature. So the easiest and most efficient way to do that is to do it while when you just mix it. So what we're going to do, we're going to divide the dough between two pieces of parchment paper. Um, I'm just going to eyeball it like it's not that serious. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to stress about the clumps. Why? Because the, we're going to squish them together. And the only reason that they're apart is because we haven't bothered to do so yet. So we're just going to take our cookie dough. We're going to make a nice little ball. Mostly just to get it in one, one clean shape here. Press it out! And then we're going to cover it with parchment and we're going to roll it. So get it into a nice little shape here. All these guys waste not one, not, you know what I mean? So, all right, press it down. All right, cover it with another piece of parchment. You could roll it out on one piece of parchment with a rolling pin. You could totally do that. And you could actually do that without additional edge flour as well. But um, we're just going to do one at a time here. So we are going to roll this out between two pieces of parchment paper, and that is so that we don't have to add additional bench flour, um, which is just going to make our dough drier and less chewy and less soft, um, and also just dilute the flavor of the chocolate. And we don't want any of those things to happen. So parchment, go ahead and you can just kind of get it to, you're going to roll it just get it a little flatter, right? Just doing a combination of kind of pressing and rolling to get my dough to be even. And at this point, we're gonna go ahead and use the same technique that I like to use my other sugar cookies, which is we're gonna hold the pocket and then we're gonna press. Saves a lot of rolling time. The dough is very soft, so there's no reason not to do this. Now, I'm, I'm feeling my dough because I'm trying to see where there are fat places. There's some fat places in the center. Now, a, uh, a straight rolling pin would make this a lot easier, but mine is at home and not here. Now, gorgeous. You see her? Isn't that nice? Let's go ahead and check the thickness. Okay. Still a little chunky in the center, so we'll just give her a little roll here. All right. I think we're good. Yep. We're going for about a quarter of an inch. You could do thicker. That's totally fine. You'll just get a, a lower yield. Um, you could also do thinner, but they will be more crispy. Um, it's very hard to make a thin yet chewy rolled cookie. Go ahead and put it on your baking sheet. We're gonna chill this um, a minimum of 30 minutes. Two hours would be best. Um, so we're gonna chill it for two hours. And you could absolutely chill this overnight, um, up to three days. Or you can freeze it, so wrap the whole thing and freeze it flat um, for up to three months. Okay, the moment has come. We are ready to roll our cookie dough. It is firm. Um, we're taking it out of the refrigerator. And I'm just gonna take one of these sheets and we'll work with one at a time. So we're gonna go ahead and peel off the parchment off one side. We'll flip her over. Boom. Oh. And we'll peel this side as well. The reason I do that is so that you don't have to peel each cookie off of the parchment on the other side. So let's just go ahead and pick our favorite cookie cutter, whatever we're going to do today, and go ahead and start cutting. I do use the same one of the, I just reused the parchment that I used to chill and roll to bake, and it just makes it a lot simpler. You're going to want to preheat your oven to 325 conventional. Convection is fine, but you, they do have a tendency to bubble 
um, up in places. So they might puff um, unevenly. So if your goal is to have a smooth decorating surface, then you're definitely going to want to bake them um, without the fan. You don't need to space them far apart. You can put them pretty close together because they do not spread. Now you can re-roll this dough. Um, it is going to press together and re-roll better when it is not cold. Right now it's still cold. I cut those pretty quickly. So I'm just going to like let it sit here while I cut my next set, my next tray. And um, once it gets a little bit warmer, then I will, I'll um, press it together and, and roll it back out the same way we did in the beginning. I don't love my star cookie cutters, okay? All right, so we're gonna, I'm going to combine these scraps and press them together once they become room temperature. And then I will re-roll them and cut more cookies. Because you definitely, I basically, I do re-roll until I get to the very end and continue to re-roll it. We didn't add any additional flour, so there's really nothing, there's no problem there. Um, it's crumbly because it is cold. So I'm going to take her, I'm going to put her over here and let her hang out until she is room temperature. Even though my room is a little cold. So my oven is preheated to 325, conventional, no, up, no fan. I have briefly chilled these. It only takes like 10, 15, 20 minutes, depending on how long it took for you to cut them. Me, it took like five minutes, so um, they're really not that cold, they're not that warm. Uh, and then we're just gonna bake them in the preheated oven. It really depends on the size and shape of your cookie. If you have a very thin cookie uh, with lots of detail, uh, like the stars are gonna bake less time than the hearts, okay? So the, these hearts will probably bake anywhere between six and eight minutes. Um, is my best guess, and then um, the stars will probably be a little less time, so probably closer to the six. If you're baking a bigger cookie, like a so, which is cool, then that's probably gonna take closer to nine, nine, ten minutes, okay? Um, so just pop them in, rotate after three, and then just keep an eye out on them, well, eye, eye on them. So what we're doing, we're looking for them to look matte and no longer doughy in the center. You're not gonna see any browning, you're not gonna see anything like that. You really don't want to in these cookies. You just want to see a, a matte, kind of no longer glossy surface. So I've actually decorated these cookies with my easy sugar cookie icing, which is just confectioner sugar, a little bit of milk, a dupe of vanilla, and corn syrup. And the corn syrup just gets it, keeps it a little soft even when it's set, and it makes it shiny, almost like a royal icing would. Um, so this is just a really simple way to decorate. Some of them you can see that I've decorated with some food coloring, and some I've kept more, you know, with sprinkles and such. So it's really so many ideas. I'll link to a, a post down below of a couple easy decorating tips that don't require, you know, 20 different colors and piping and all extravaganza. So without further ado, it's time to try. I'm gonna try one that isn't iced because I actually like them better when they're not iced because I'm weird. It's just me. Mm. Oh my God. It's so soft. It has like a little bit of chew in the center but it's crispy around the edges. It's like super rich and chocolatey but not too sweet especially when they're not iced. So the dough itself isn't super sweet, which allows you to use a sweeter icing. But if you use something like my royal icing, maybe use orange juice instead of the lemon juice, just for a, like a really nice chocolate orange flavor. Anyways, oh my gosh, so many ideas. So good. So good.